<clears throat> Welcome um, back to our YouTube channel. After day murdering three. day three after <laughs> murdering somebody. Whoa! Don't put that on camera. <laughs> Hello my friends, welcome back. Today I have a crazy case that I kind of just found out about two days ago because it was on the news. I heard about this case without realizing it back in April of 2020. So it's all about teens who when I saw it, I thought it said they killed their father. So I thought it was siblings. But then as I read further, it actually was a teen couple who killed her father right here in Las Vegas. I guess it was like a Romeo and Juliet meets Bonnie and Clyde type of situation. Two days ago, I had the baby out for a walk. Usually I listen to audiobooks, but I got this book that was kind of boring. I just wasn't into it. I'll do like Marco Polo chats with my friends. So once I'm all caught up on those, I'll go to YouTube and I'll just see what's going on there. I love watching YouTube videos. I love making YouTube videos. I love everything about YouTube. I'm subscribed to local and national news channel channels, but a lot of local, especially since Adam's been on the news. I'll post the last video in the cards where he was on the news the last time. I saw a news headline and it said kids, teens that killed their father. So I clicked on it and I'm like, why do these kids look familiar? And then I saw the crime itself happened back in August, April, sorry, April of 21. And they were just getting sentenced and that's what the news was about. As I'm watching it, I'm like, oh my God. Okay, do you guys remember when I was pregnant back in April of 21, for you guys that don't know, I had a baby in July of 21, okay? So Adam and I were working out a lot at parks. I had my doctor's appointment, so what was that? I guess that's when I was going every week. It was on a Thursday. I recorded and posted videos about every doctor's appointment for you guys that wanted to know. I literally have a video about this. I had developed some sort of bacterial infection and I needed to get an antibiotic. And I remember specifically asking the midwife and telling you guys, is it okay for me to take this antibiotic pregnant? Because she's like, do you want an internal or do you want an oral? And I was like, what's better for the baby? She's like, it's totally up to you because you're in the third trimester. So you get to decide. And I was like, well, I'd rather take an oral. And I'm telling you guys that because I'm still pretty new. Like I got pregnant six weeks after moving to Las Vegas. So when they asked me what pharmacy I go to, I was like, I just, whatever first one you recommend. So I went to this pharmacy, kind of far from my house, but I remember the cross streets were like Durango and something, Durango and Cheyenne, maybe Durango and something. I'm not really, still not very familiar because moved here six weeks later, got pregnant, nine months later, had a baby and have been like basically a stay at home mom without a car since. I'm getting lost in a tangent. So remember that. I'm on Durango and whatever cross street at some CVS, pick up my medication. The next day we're working out at the park, nine months pregnant. I'm like, let me just run and use the restroom before we start because bladder issues. If you know, you know. I'm going into the bathroom at this park and there are signs out there for two missing teens. It's so burned into my memory. I remember looking at it and it was like a fill in the blank type of situation. And I remember thinking the girl's parents must have put this up like this must be a couple because they were 16 years old. Now knowing the story, they were 16 and 18, the girl's 16. It was like, you know, age and then a line, kind of like a Mad Libs, right? And then you fill in the blank. Hers was thoroughly filled out. His just had like randoms or it might've all been filled out with just like one word answers. And her was like really, really filled out. And I specifically remember one of them having a Hispanic last name and like I could see her eyeliner in my head. I could just see it. And I remember thinking specifically, oh my God, they were last seen at that CVS on Durango and whatever, where we just were last night. So we do our workout. We go over to the sink to wash our hands. And I was like, Adam, take note to this. He was still working at like his corporate job at the time. He was out and about in the town way more than I was. I was like, so just keep an eye out for these poor kids that are missing. And I remember saying like, they have to be runaways. It's like 16 and 18, you know, like the ages. And she kind of had, in my opinion at the time, like at least the photo they used of her, kind of like a emo. We, I call it emo still. What do you call that? I don't know what the slang for it is now, but like an emo look to her. Is that still a word that people use? I'm so old. Okay. This is April, 2021. I'm like, Adam, take note of it. And I remember specifically burning their images into my memory. And I do that frequently if I see missing kids, because if I see them on the street, I want to get them help. Go on with my life, have my baby, move on. Fast forward, here we are, October, 2022. And I see on the news, these kids killed this girl's father and they're getting sentenced. And I'm like, oh my God, those were the kids that were the runaways. I'm like, hmm, I want to get into true crime stories. Let's dive deep into this one. I did. We're going to talk about this case, but also it's becoming a running joke with myself that I'm like, okay, next video is going to be the case that started all of this and we're not there yet. <laughs> but it's just going to be a running joke, at least with myself. It's like in my own backyard. Once again, for the person in my comments, and I cannot for my life of me remember who said it, that was like, 
I would just like spend all day and night being entertained by your police scanner. Clearly all of my true crime videos since I started saying that I wanted to talk about them have been right here from my local news. The victim in this case is a man named Daniel Halseth. Daniel was born in Oregon. He came from a long line of family members who were settlers, like amongst the early settlers in Oregon. I don't know why that was important, but it was in like every single bit of research that I did, but he was living here in Las Vegas. He actually had his bachelor's in music. He was a very creative person from Western Oregon University. His nickname in college was Drummer Dan. He absolutely loved music. It was part of his passion, but he also got a business degree from Salem University. In more recent years, developed a pretty decent following on social media. He had like 20,000 or something subscribers on Instagram and he posted a lot of traveling pictures. So along with music, he loved photography. He was just a naturally creative person. And he posted these gorgeous pictures all over his Instagram. He traveled a lot and he did like a lot of nature photography. In fact, his last post on Instagram was a trip that was, I believe, from in Rhode Island, in California, and a couple of other places. So he posted pictures of like landscapes and skylines and sunsets and basically anything that a photographer's eye was would catch and that was pleasing to like our layperson eyes. The last picture that he posted on his Instagram account, he was in a plane that was descending over the Las Vegas skyline. It was in the evening and it was just like a really beautiful depiction of the Vegas lights and the Vegas skyline. In between like those other pictures, he posted a lot of of really inspirational, motivational quotes. He did have a run-in with the law back, like I wanna say like 2010, 2011, when he was going through a divorce, and we'll get there in one second. But in the more recent years, he was trying to keep himself motivated, but also keep other people motivated and happy and like setting goals and attaining them. And you guys know that type. He was married in 2001 to a woman who was the youngest woman to be elected in the Nevada Senate. Her name was Elizabeth. They went on to get married, have three children together. Each child was spaced a year apart. So it was like number one, a year later they had number two, and a year later they had number three. Their marriage lasted 10 years and they got divorced in around 2011. And right around 2011, he found out allegedly that she was cheating on him. And that's when this whole like run in with the law happened. I didn't really look into it. So you can go find the story if you're interested. But basically it was like this weird threatening thing that he did with her when he found out and after he got 60 or 90 days of probation because of it is when he filed for divorce. But him and his wife still had a really good relationship because they still had a joint bank account. The majority of the funds coming in and out of that bank account was for child related stuff. She got remarried and she moved over to like, I think Alaska and they're still sharing a bank account. Like they have a very healthy, in my opinion, co-parenting relationship. Daniel also had a YouTube channel and on this YouTube channel, he posted a lot of hiking pictures and like out in nature pictures, or I should say videos. And there were a lot of videos with his three children, especially his youngest, Sierra, but they were kind of older. When the kids were young, they were growing up. And at this point, the youngest Sierra was 16 years old back in 2021. Daniel also had an extremely close relationship with his mother, one that I can only wish that I have with my son when he's older. They spoke on the phone every single day. Back in April, like around the 5th, Daniel's mother tried to get a hold of him and she couldn't. Then after two days of trying to get a hold of him, she called his daughter, Sierra. So Sierra at this point was living with her dad because again, mom was living with the new boyfriend, having a great relationship over in Alaska. Sierra wanted to stay with her dad. She wanted to be here in Las Vegas with her father. So grandma calls Sierra and was like, what's going on? I cannot get a hold of your dad. And she's like, oh, listen, grandma, no big deal. His phone's broken. It should be fixed within the next day or two, but don't worry, everything's fine. He's fine. It was a little unsettling to the grandma, totally unlike him. Who just lives in 2021 without their phone? You'll go get a loaner. You'll get your phone fixed immediately. It's very uncommon. Or hello, I'm dad and I'm paying my daughter's phone bill. You sure as <laughs> better let me borrow your phone and talk to my mom if we talk every single day. I guess grandma felt the same way because the following day she calls Sierra and she's like, let me talk to your dad. And she's like, oh, don't worry, grandma. He's in the shower, but everything's fine. She's like, if you don't let me speak to your father, I'm calling 911. And Sierra's like, mm, click. I don't want to deal with this. So grandma calls 911 because she's like, something is not right here. I've never gone this long without speaking to my son. My granddaughter is being shady AF. 
I want to know what's going on. So she calls the police and she calls the landlord where Daniel and Sierra are living. And she's like, listen, can you just do me a favor? I haven't spoken to Daniel. Sierra's being weird. So can you just go over to the house and check and make sure everything's okay? Tell him to call me. The landlord's like, okay, no problem. Listen, I have a whole bunch of errands I have to do, but when I'm done, it should take me a couple hours. I'll go check up on him and I'll let you know. So that's exactly what happens. She does her errands. She grabs her friend. I don't know if she grabs her friend because she's like, uh, something shady could be going on here or if she was just with her friend running the errands. It's not really clear. It doesn't really matter. She and her friend are done with the errands. They go to Daniel's house and they see some flames and they're like, okay, we're calling the fire department. This is weird. So the fire department comes and they're like, oh, okay, routine house fire put out the flames. They're surveilling the area to make sure that everything's okay. They see in the living room where there was like a bunch of ash where it was probably lit and they get to the garage and they find a dead body stuffed in a sleeping bag and it's charred. They call 911 as well. So now they have 911. The police have the call from grandma and then they also have the call from the fire department that's like, you gotta get over here. We found a dead body. It's not just a routine house fire. This is arson and looks like a homicide. Police come to the house. By the way, like a side note, I want to take the cops here out for drinks because my goodness, the things that I've been exposed to just through the news over the past month that I've been looking into this stuff, holy moly, these poor people. Anyway, they come to the house and they find there's lighter fluid sprinkled all over the house. There was a part in the living room. I don't know why that's really charred and burned. It looks like where they started the fire. In the garage, they find lighter fluid, a chainsaw, a round saw, two pocket knives that looked like they had blood on them at one point, but they had been tried to be washed, been tried to be washed off. Wow. They had been tried to be washed off. How do you say that? There was an attempt to wash them off. Does that sound right? I should just leave all that in, right? There was bleach. Uh, let's see in my notes what else there was. I'm trying to do this off memory. So here's what they found because I don't understand all these different saws. They found a hand saw, a circular saw, circular saw, there's my New York, a circular saw, say that 10 times fast, especially if you're from New York, circular saw, a hand saw with, brace yourself, human tissue and blood in the teeth. I know, gross, I'm sorry. It appeared they attempted to use that saw to dismember the body. They couldn't do it. Instead of trying to dismember the body, they shoved it in a sleeping bag and they lit the house on fire to try to destroy evidence. So what happened here? Why did this man who was filled with motivation suddenly get murdered in cold blood in his own garage? And what did the two teens in the beginning of this video have to do with it? Here's the breakdown. This couple was madly in love and we're gonna put the emphasis on the word mad because you gotta be a mad meaning crazy to do this Bonnie and Clyde, Romeo and Juliet crazy nonsense. Their names are Aaron Guerrero, I can't say that one, Aaron Guerrero, and wait for it, Sierra Halseth. That's right, Daniel Halseth's daughter. According to Aaron's mother, this relationship between these two teens started around June of 2020. Aaron was 18 and Sierra was 16. And like most 16 year olds that can't see past next week, they were convinced they were going to spend the rest of their lives together. You know, young, naive, teenage love. They protected this relationship like two fierce pit bulls. They decided they wanted to run away together, run away and spend the rest of their lives together. And Aaron even told his mom that they were doing it. He's like, mom, we're running away, we're going to LA. And like any concerned mother, she called Sierra's parents. And together, the parents all decided it was in their best interest to tell these teenagers they needed to cool it. They wouldn't let them spend time together. They were like, you guys need a break. Like This is a little too hot and heavy for a 16 and 18 and running away to LA is the stupidest idea ever. So the kids being kids who still had access to one another with like phones and social media and all that stuff, they began plotting and they were going to figure out a way to run away together. They still had this plan to run off into the sunset in Santa Monica or wherever they were going and live happily ever after, according to them. But in the meantime, while they're like scheming and plotting this out, Aaron is fighting with his parents every single day, threatening to run away every single day, getting like a little violent here and there with them. And it just wasn't a good situation. And then Sierra, who was also extremely close with her father up until now, was starting to act out as well. She was 
getting distant. She was starting fights with her dad. She was explaining that like he ruined her life because he wouldn't let her be with Aaron, the love of her life, this and that. They were going to run away. You know, I want to say typical teenage love stuff, but the typical teenage love stuff like stops there. You hate your parents in the moment. And then like all of us, or at least me, you thank them later when you're old enough to look back and realize that hindsight is 2020. 20, and you know, when you're 16, your relationship is going to last forever. You give your parents a hard time. These kids are still telling their parents they're going to run away. Obviously, they're not the smartest because they're young. They're naive. But they're telling their parents where they're going. <laughs> Back when I lived in New York, well, New Jersey, you guys, but I'm originally from New York. So there was a radio station broadcast from New York. You could hear it in New Jersey. You could hear it on Sirius now called Z100. And they had this bit on there called Stupid News. And they would highlight the stupidest criminals of the week. And I feel like this can't be stupid news because they were just so young and just so naive. But we were so dumb. Anyway, okay, let's get serious because this is a serious thing. This is breaking Daniel's heart. So he starts posting all of these old videos on social media of him with his kids, him and Sierra dancing, him and his kids, like just good times, good memories, and like all these inspirational saying quotes with these videos and posting things like, you know, we'll get through this, everything's gonna be fine, we'll come out the other side, paraphrasing and not verbatim, but like that type of stuff. Just reminiscing on when times were much better and things were simpler and easier for them, but saying like, we're gonna get through the tough stuff. It's totally normal. Teenage stuff, we're gonna get on the other side. I'm your dad, we'll stick together. Not so much, didn't turn out like that. In these posts, he said, I love you, my love is unwavering, and we're gonna get through this. And and Sierra was furious. Once again, Sarah and Aaron are continuing to make plans to run it away together. And like they were smart enough to know that in order to do this, they were going to need some money. So the plan was that they were going to rob their parents, get some money, run away together to LA, like simple in their heads, right? But that was the plan. Like, I don't think there was any further plan at that point to do anything more malicious. I mean, that's bad, but other than rob their parents, steal their money and get away fast enough before the parents could figure out it was them that did it. And by the time they figured it out in these kids' heads, they would be long gone. Something went awry. Because remember Daniel, the dad's ex-wife Elizabeth still shared a bank account with him. She starts seeing these weird charges, like $1,500 worth of charges on his credit cards. And he was not that type. And it was like over a span of like a few hours or a day or so. So she's like, something's wrong here. She didn't know what he spent it on, but she could see it was swiping his card, not like him. So she's trying to get in touch with him and she can't. She's calling to look for him. His mom's calling to look for him. Everybody's concerned. The landlord goes, finds the fire, finds the body, and he is in the garage dead. Police start looking at surveillance footage. The police see the kids driving away from the house in what appeared to be Daniel's car, a gray or silver Nissan sedan. They also have footage of Aaron at a local hardware store buying saws, gloves, and other things that he used in the murder. Sierra was captured at the Winco, which is a grocery store, buying bleach and cleaning supplies. This was a couple days before the murder. So I don't know where this went from just like a robbery and a runaway situation. And in their heads, it turned into a homicide situation. Aaron and Sierra decided to flee the state runaways. They knew they needed to get out of here. And that's where I saw the posters for the kids. I'm so excited about it. Aaron and Sierra decided to flee the state in Dan's car. They ditched the car at some point and they got on a train. They were arrested in Salt Lake City, Utah. What happened was they were hopping on and off, on and off different trains. At one point in Salt Lake City, police saw them hopping on and off the trains or they just asked them, but they asked Aaron for his ticket. They wanted to see his train ticket. And he admitted to them, I don't have a ticket. We've just been riding the train. So they're like, hold on. They ID'd him, ran his ID and saw that they had for both kids an extradition warrant to come back to Las Vegas. They're young, naive kids that don't know what they're doing. So they left a whole bunch of forensic evidence in their path. But what nailed the coffin and what got them on this, nailed the coffin like this is you, was that video that I played that they posted on their YouTube shorts, YouTube stories, something like that. I'm gonna play the whole thing for you now. That was, it's really disturbing because they're like gloating about it. And it, they were laughing. They just seemed like carefree and careless. like. This was the best thing they could have done and they were celebrating with all kinds of intimacy. Just watch it. I don't know what to say. <clears throat> Welcome um, back to our YouTube channel. After day, three. day three after <laughs> murdering somebody. Whoa! 
<laughs> don't put that on the camera. It was worth it. Um, and we had sex a lot today. Mm hmm It was worth it. I got plenty of sex. I was payment for doing it. <laughs> and no, no bleeding this time. Mm hmm We got, we got through that. We, we overcame. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> the police found this video when they confidence con I can never say that word. The police found this their YouTube video, or I guess it was in their camera roll, I have no idea, but they found the video footage when they confiscated their phones for evidence. It was enough to arrest and book them. I wanna say it was like June at some point. They both pled not guilty. A little while later, a year later, where they both pled guilty to avoid the death penalty for Aaron because Sierra's 16, but in the state of Nevada, you can, on a homicide case, be charged as an adult 16. It was him that actually committed the act. And by the way, Daniel was stabbed over 70 times in the chest, the neck, like the upper body and the back area. So to avoid the death penalty for him, they pled guilty. They both pled guilty. And then sentencing was this, what brought my attention to this case in October, 2020. And they were convicted, guilty, convicted on all counts, not only of the homicide, which they got, they got life with the possibility of parole after it was either 22 or 23 years. And then they were also convicted on counts of conspiracy, arson, credit card fraud, and murder. The kids were being held without bail that whole entire time because I guess they were considered flight risks. I'm not sure. I don't know if it was because of the gruesomeness of the murder. I don't know why, but they were being held without bail and they were finally sentenced on October. I wanna say that was like the 19th ish. Now, what's interesting is Daniel Halseth's obituary stated that he was survived by his two children. Remember he had three and Sierra was the baby, the third, and the only the first two children were named. The family didn't say much more. They did put out a statement that was basically like, we're beside ourselves. And they said that he died suddenly. They didn't say how, because they, I guess, didn't want to bring more attention to this matter, but they were like, please respect us. Please don't contact the family. And then in the obituary, she was not named. The grandma came out in an interview somewhere and said, she's not my granddaughter. Like, I don't consider her my granddaughter and I don't blame her. You're in a tough spot because your son is the victim and the killer is your granddaughter. Can you talk about that? Well, she's not my granddaughter. Her. And then the rest of the family refuses to comment. What a horrible, horrific and sad case. Just these two young kids who were so madly in love and they were just so naive. I think we've all been there. It, teenage love, young love. What is it? Like a very small percentage of those relationships truly work out because we're just not mature enough at that age. Let me know if you like these type of videos. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I love you guys so much. I will see you in the next one. Mwah.